make a city. 20 miles, you won't make it before dark. Thanks. You lose something? My watch. When's the last time you looked at it? This morning, this morning before breakfast at the hotel. I wound it, I set it down on a table next to Ben, then I forgot all about it. I'll pick it up on the way out of town. Adios. Send a wire to Lee Ricker in Mecca City. Send a message. Candidate approaches. Go on. Now that's it. No signature. Well, you're entitled to seven more words. I don't need them. All right, so send it right out. Is your clock fast? No, sir. Never in ten years. And mine must be slow. Make a city if you want. I'd never make it. Well, then I'll go and fetch some help. You do that. Let me help you over here. What's what? See? Oh. Anything else I can do for you? Yes. What is it? Did you ever see an old man about to die? You? I got a grandson in Mecca City. Eight years old. He's my nearest living kin. I've been saving something for him for a long time. It's the only thing I got to leave. I want you to take it to him, will you? Sure, sure I will. His name's Bobby Townsend. He lives with the family called Fletcher. Yeah. What is it? Take a look. Where'd you get it? It's an old story. Too long to tell. Bobby Town. Family's name's Fletcher. Shall go. Go now. Sir, you've never laid eyes on me before in your life. How do you know I won't run off with this? I don't 
think I have anything to worry about. Shack about 10 miles from town. He needs a doctor bad. Shack about 10 miles from town, huh? Would that be on the north side of the road? Off 50 yards, up a small rise? That's the place. Ain't anyone occupied that shack in years. Well, there's someone occupying it now, and if he doesn't get help soon, he's gonna die. What's his name? I didn't ask him. He's from this town, though. How do you know? He's got a grandson here. What's the grandson's name? Uh, Townsend. Bobby Townsend. Never heard of him. He's an eight-year-old boy, lives with a family called Fletcher. Never heard that name either. And I know everyone in town. Everyone. This is Maker City, isn't it? That's right. I don't believe I caught your name. Yuma, Johnny Yuma. Lift your arms, Mr. Yuma. What's this all about? Lift your arms and we'll see. Over against the door. That doesn't belong to me. I know. John Yuma, I arrest you for the murder and robbery of Miss Amelia Hart. Your lawyer would like a word with you. I didn't send for a lawyer. He was assigned to you by the court. I don't need a lawyer. Just ride out to that shack and talk to that old man. You'll see what a mistake you're making. I did ride out to that shack. And? There wasn't any old man. I tell you, there was. You want to talk to him? Yes or no? You go to trial in the morning, Mr. Yuma. Tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning. All right, I'll talk to him. My name is Ricker, Lee Ricker. How do you do? Now, to begin with, uh, Mr. Yuma, I would suggest that, um... Well, to begin with, I'd like to know what the devil I'm being tried for. Why, the robbery and murder of Amelia Hart. Could you fill me in on the details? Well, Amelia Hart, an attractive woman of dubious reputation, was found slain in her bed two weeks ago. The diamond which she always wore was missing. And that's the diamond they found on me? Yes, I'm afraid so. Well, what happens now? Since your story about the old man has been discredited, I'd advise you to place yourself at the mercy of the court and plead guilty. I will not. Well, you think about it, and I'll be back this afternoon sometime. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, you might ask the sheriff if I can have my journal. All right. I'll see you later. My brother said you wanted that. Your brother? Yes. My lawyer's your brother? That's right. His name's Lee Ricker. Mine's Bill Ricker. Well, that's, uh, that's quite a coincidence. Well, not really. There are only two lawyers in Mecca City. Why didn't I get the other one? Wouldn't change anything if you did. Why not? He's my brother, too. Vance. You'll see him tomorrow. How come? He's the prosecuting attorney. Part of an outsider for saying so, but it appears that you, uh, Rickers have made a private business out of justice. I can see how you get that impression. Tell me about the rest of your family. Well, that's all there is. Just Lee, Vance, and myself. And our father. Oh, uh, I'd be afraid to ask you what your father does. The father's the judge. The judge. I'm the prosecuting attorney. My name is Ricker. Isn't everyone's? The court will come to order. Judge Adam Ricker is about to take the bench.
Be seated. It's him. The old man in the shack. The one who was dying, the one who gave me the time. What are you trying to do to me? What are you trying to do to me? Any further such outburst by the defendant, and I shall order him shackled. I think we can proceed now. Mr. Prosecutor, call your first witness. I call Dr. Loftus to the stand. You swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Your full name, please. Dr. Peter J. Loftus. And your connection with this case? Coroner. Did you ascertain the cause of death? I did. Thank you. Your witness? No questions. Witness may step down. Can you tell the court where you found this diamond? Yes, sir. On the person of the defendant, night before last. Thank you. Your witness. I have no questions. Witness may step down. You were Miss Hart's maid? Yes, sir. And her friend for 20 years. Can you identify this? Yes. He belonged to Miss Hart. Thank you. Your witness. I have no questions, Your Honor. Witness may step down. You accompanied the sheriff to the shack where Mr. Yuma claims to have met the old man. Yes, sir. Can you tell the court what you found there? Nothing. Not a sign of life. Thank you. Your witness. No questions. Witness may step down. With the court's permission, I'd like to make a statement. Permission granted. What I have to say is in the form of a question. If I were the man that committed the murder, why in heaven's name would I come back to Mecca City? I uh, think I can answer the defendant's question, Your Honor. Go ahead. I offer in evidence this watch. That's my watch. Mr. Hume is correct. The watch bears his name. It was found in Amelia Hart's room the day she was murdered. That's a lie. Until now, the existence of this watch has been held as secret evidence in the hopes that its owner may be tempted to try and recover the one clue connecting him with this young girl's death. That's why you came back here, Mr. Yuma. Any more questions? The defendant will rise and approach the bench. John Yuma, the jury has found you guilty as charged. It is now my duty to pronounce sentence. The penalty is death. Execution will take place tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. You will be hanged by the neck until dead. And may God have mercy on your soul. Why are you doing this to me? Why? time is it? Time to go. Where? Come on. Where to? Out. Wait till morning. 
Zimmermann. the right thing to do, Pa? Yes. Let's get on with it. The least you can do is tell me why you're hanging me. You're not being hanged. Give him his things. You'll find all your belongings in there. Well, now what happens? Now you ride away from here just as quick and as fast as you can. And never show your face in this part of the country again. Well, go on. Get going. So you can say I was trying to escape and shoot me in the back? No, thanks. You can go on or you can stay here. That's the end of that. Well, let's talk about tomorrow. Out of your mind. I don't think so. Then you're a fool. I don't plead guilty there either. Then what'd you come back for? Because I don't want to live the rest of my life as a wanted man. If you're still here three hours from now, you will be hanged. I don't think so. What's to prevent it? You. If you could stand by and see an innocent man hanged, you wouldn't have gone to all the trouble you just did. Just exactly what is it you want? A public clearing of my name. Until I get that, I stay right here. You're a bold player, Mr. Yuma. But you've misread the hand. How so? Amelia Hart was killed by one of my boys. Pa, what are you doing? I'm just trying to make it clear to Mr. Yuma that there's something at stake here that means more to me than his life. But, Pa, be still. Go on. Afraid that suspicion would eventually focus on my son, I decided to offer the public a scapegoat. One who would be tried and found guilty, and then allowed to escape. Well, you picked the wrong man for the job. I sincerely hope not, Mr. Yuma, for both our sakes. If you are not gone by morning, you will be hanged as scheduled. I will regret this very much, but I will do nothing to save you. Why did you pick me for this job? We needed somebody without any roots. You just happened by. What time is it now? Quarter of five. What's taking Lee so long? Huh? Suppose you must still there. He won't be. But suppose he is. I tell you, he won't be. He's just running a bluff. Well? No. What do you mean, no? I mean he's still in that cell, scribbling in that book. The whole world to choose from, and we have to pick one like that. If he's still there an hour from now, Pa, he'll hang. I know. What are you going to do, Pa? How did we ever come to such a pass? The Rickers started this town. They gave it back bone and dignity for three generations. And now the whole thing might end in dishonor and disgrace. 
fall because one of my sons, one of my fine pampered sons, lost his head on a Saturday night. I'd do anything to save one of my boys. Anything. But kill an innocent man. I'll give you one half hour head start. That's the best I can do for you. Now get out. Get out. You'd sacrifice your own flesh and blood for the sake of a stranger? You're the stranger. My firstborn son. The one I loved the most. The one that I thought I knew best. The one that's failed in everything. At school. At being a doctor like your ma wanted. At being a sheriff like we made you. At being a man. You're the stranger. What say my brothers? First I'll get some things in the chain. You'll get nothing. You'll go right now just the way you are. Anything you say, Pa. Paul, well, he's headed for the jail. If it hadn't been for you, Everything would have worked out fine. Just fine. You won the gamble. But the payoff ain't gonna be what you figured. Stand up. either way. I've resigned my office. I heard. One question. Sure. Why didn't you stay and press charges against me? Why didn't you let me hang? And why did you holler out a warning? Here's your watch, Johnny. Thanks. And I know how you felt about him. Runs a little slow, it always has. Ever since my father gave it to me. 